Uh, Albert Grande here from PeachTherapy.com. I'm talking to Chase Gibb all the way in Iowa, corn country. How are you doing today, my friend? Good, good. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing very well. Uh, Chase, tell me a little bit about yourself and your food businesses. A little bit about myself, I suppose. I started out working at McDonald's when I was 16 years old. So I, I got in the food business right away when I was, when I was young. Um, and then I, I was in and out. I, I attended our local community college. I had actually enrolled in a pre-law program uh, when I was younger. Long story short, I decided college wasn't quite right for me. I'd always been a good student, but I just didn't, I didn't enjoy college. So I started bartending and uh, worked in a few restaurants here and there. And I had decided that uh, hospitality was the way that I wanted to go. So I bought a local tavern that I was actually managing and decided that uh, I could tell that the neighborhood bar business was starting to trend down a little bit. So I decided after I had told myself I would never get involved with food again, um, I installed a kitchen and things really took off from there. So we, uh, we did a lot of tacos, tenderloins, uh, uh, and I rolled that into three restaurants that were the same concept. And then I followed up by opening up uh, Coal House 337, which was my uh, pizza, uh, pizza and steak concept and uh, had coal fired pizza and at the same time had purchased a couple of the uh, mobile wood fired ovens at the same time and uh, started a real estate investment business in the middle of it all so I have I have quite a bit going on so that's that's a little bit about me I've got a couple kids English bulldog I uh, I stay busy very busy guy. <laughs> I bet you do I bet you do hey that coal fired oven is pretty amazing how were you able to get get that settled in um, the coal fired oven, uh, we brought that baby in. I bought that from Woodstone. Um, we brought that thing in, do New York style pizzas with that. And it, uh, I mean, it was a process getting your pizza dough recipe figured out, you know, dealing with, um, uh, the humidity here is, uh, I mean, that's a battle with your dough here in, in the Midwest, especially during the middle of the summer, when you're running hundred percent humidity, you know, it's a lot different than it is in the middle of the winter working with your pizza dough then. So it, uh, it was a battle. It was definitely a battle, but we got it fine tuned and, uh, uh, things have went well with it. Yeah, that's great. Tell me a little bit, how did you figure out your pizza dough recipe and your new New York style? Um, I had actually went to the uh, uh, Tony Gimignani's uh, pizza school in San Francisco. So when I was out there, I actually went out there uh, to take his Neapolitan course. And when I was there, uh, of course, you go into his location down there. And I, I fell in love with the, the New York style pizza that he was doing there and decided that that was the, uh, the angle I wanted to go. So um, I'd been in contact with Tony. Um, I'd been in contact with Laura uh, when I was starting this process to kind of get my recipe uh, where I wanted it. And of course, a lot of trial and error to get things where I needed to. You know, it's sure. a lot of chemistry involved, a lot of chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Well, that must have been an amazing course. Tony is, of course, a, a great master. Laura, Laura Meyer, of course, another one is number two. Uh, how was that? How was that school? Um, it was good. It was really good. I, uh, you know, uh, to go out there, some people might say that it, whether you say it's expensive or not, I don't think it was expensive. It was worth every penny. And the good thing about Tony, you know, when you go there, you're spending a week with him. You're spending a week with Laura. They take it very serious. So you really want to go there and, and learn from them, take notes. It's very intense. It is a lot of information that you take in in that, you know, five, six, seven days whatever it was i can't remember but it you don't go to san francisco and take that course to go out partying at night wake up sure. hung over the next day to go to class you go there you go to class you go back to your hotel room you study you go back in you do it all again the next day so it's it's intense it's worth every penny absolutely. yeah that's good to say i mean you get what you pay for and you can certainly yeah, absolutely uh, 
Absolutely. You know, and, and again, Tony, spending any time with Tony, which I've done a lot, uh, he's just a, an amazing guy. And as well as Laura, both two incredible very, masters of the pizza. Very, very down to earth, you know, for all that they've accomplished and everything that they've done, they're very down to earth, you know. You shoot Tony a text, he's back to you in no time. Super, super nice people. Absolutely, absolutely. And you also mentioned you have a couple of wood-fired ovens. How, how did you how did you turn that direction? Um, so I had, uh, when I was at pizza school um, with Tony, I met Siler and I became friends with Siler Chapman out there. So I knew going in that here in the Midwest that the coal-fired oven was going to be a battle because everybody in this area likes their $7 Domino's pizzas. Absolutely. So, so of course, I knew that we were not going to be able to function just as a restaurant, that we were going to have to be able to do off-site caterings, mobile oven pop-ups, festivals, you know, things like that. So in doing that, um, I spoke with Siler because I'd seen his portable ovens. I decided that those portable ovens were the wood fired ovens, even though it wasn't coal, I decided that wood fired ovens were going to be something that was really going to be an asset in our area that, that nobody else had. Uh, so I ended up, uh, even before I went out to uh, wood fired university with Adjeth, I went ahead and purchased an oven from him. And then I went out to his, uh, his wood fired university and took in a lot of information there. But I'm telling you, the second that I had that oven ordered, I had people uh, booking events already. It's it's pretty it's pretty nonstop. Uh, you know, the good thing about those ovens is I can generate as much business as I want. So to take it a step further, um, I actually made the decision to close my brick and mortar location uh, with the coal fired oven, because we're so busy with the wood fired ovens that I don't need the, I, I don't want to, I, I don't try to sound rude saying this, but I just don't need the headache of sure. dealing with the brick and mortar location when I can do the same about business with a quarter of the staff, you know, or way more business with a quarter of the staff. So I, so I closed my brick and mortar location because I'm so busy with the mobile ovens. Wow. No kidding. So yeah. tell me a little, tell me a little bit about the oven that you purchased. Um, okay. So the oven that I got, I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it, I got the bigger one um, that has the, uh, has the sink on the front of it. It has yeah. the, uh, the water, the water station built into it. Um, travels well, it travels very well, plenty of storage in the back. And then I went ahead and bought the uh, 60 inch true cooler that fits right up on the front of the oven. And then we just roll that thing off and we're set up and, and, and ready to go. So yep. So it keeps up, uh, it has the uh, little gas heater on it. It keeps the, yep. the water plenty hot, which the health department likes that a lot. Absolutely. You That's know. a big issue when That's people do, are doing uh, events and stuff. They, it is. And you know, that, that is the one thing that I will say with the, uh, with the wood fired ovens is, if you're going to buy a portable oven before you put, you know, $35,000 into that, you need to check with your health department, see how they're going to license it because it can, with those ovens being portable, like they are and not everything being enclosed every single, uh, every single County and venue that we go to will uh, categorize those a little bit differently. And sure. No one's ever told us no, but there's been a few times that we've told them no because they've made it too much of a headache for us. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and uh, what kind of pizzas are you making out of those ovens? Uh, we do a Neapolitan pizza. Uh, we only do one size. We do an individual 10-inch pizza. Um, we really, being in the Midwest, we keep it simple. We do yep. uh, cheese, pepperoni, sausage and mushroom, buffalo chicken, barbecue chicken. Uh, we've got a couple other ones that we do. Of course, the pepperoni, sausage, and ricotta cheese. We've got one with the stinger. Anything, anytime that we put Mike's Hot Honey on a product, people buy it. Um, yep. We use all, you know, grande cheese, Stanislaus tomatoes. So they're, it, they're, they're good. 
you know, but we, we take it a step further. It's not just pizza that we do. I actually did a, a 200 person wedding dinner Saturday night and they did the pizzas I just mentioned. And then to take that a step further, uh, we do wood fired tacos also. So I fired mm -hmm. up, I made pork, I did some pork carnitas out of the oven. Um, I also did some uh, grilled fajita chicken that I cooked out of the oven. I cook all the tortilla shells in there. They cook up perfect in there. Um, a couple weeks ago, we did a big Hawaiian luau for the local chamber of commerce. And I actually roasted two 90 pound hogs in those wood fired ovens also. So I'm very, uh, I'm very particular when I speak to people. I try to keep from calling them pizza ovens and I call them my wood fired ovens. Yep. Because there's so many mother, so many other options for them besides just doing pizza. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty amazing. And yes. uh, you, we were talking earlier about some events that you've done, and you've kind of gotten slammed a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. We uh, three. It was a three weeks ago Saturday. I, my body's still recovering from it. Um, they had a big music festival in uh, just south of Des Moines, in Indianola, um, Knot Fest. It was uh, Slipknot puts on a big music festival there. You know, it's a it's some pretty heavy music, but it's a fun, good crowd. Uh, they had thirty thousand people there uh, in ten hours. We did over twelve hundred pizzas, um, so we were hustling and bustling, and a lot of the other food vendors weren't prepared. Uh, for what they were getting getting into. And I'll tell you what, if you're doing pizza at an event like that, you know, I learned some lessons. Less is more. Offer two kinds of pizza sure. and that's it. That's and it. People, people, people will pay for it. We were doing five kinds of pizza. We got backed up, but then come to find out everybody else was much more backed up than we were. But yeah, so, you know, you're talking walking out of there, you know, doing 1,200 pizzas in 10 hours with, we had six of us working, so it took six of us to produce that, but uh, we we did it. We do the Mississippi Valley Fair, which has uh, over a hundred thousand people walk through the gates up here. So that you know, I find that we're do we're getting invited for more and more big events, which I like. Um, is just making sure that you're staffed up and finding you know rolling your doughs out in advance if you can, so that you can make sure your oven's piping hot. Because when I do those events like that and I put those pizzas in there, I've got that thing so hot, they're coming out between 45 seconds and a minute. When I'm Wow. I mean, people don't understand that. But when you throw dough in an oven, when you're making a pizza, the, the deck of the oven, the temperature tends to go down a bit, right? The yeah, more pizza you yes. throw in. And so it, that's why... It does. So I will, a lot of times what I'll do, if we're going to do an event where I think we're going to be busy, you know, yesterday we did a small event in three hours, we did 150 pizzas. Then, um, you know, that's a small event for us, but we pull two grand doing something like that, you know? So three hours for two grand, you know, to do for doing 150 pizzas, you know, that's great. But what I like to do is I like to, uh, I fire the oven up the day before a lot of times if I wasn't using it the day before because I really want that deck at about 600 degrees when I'm cooking with it. Um, if it gets over 600, I find that the doughs will tend to, tend to scorch on me. I can lose yep. a few here and there, but if I can keep it, if I can start out at 600 degrees, I'm going to be good for the day. Most okay. of the so day. that's kind of the sweet spot for temperature. Yes. Then. Yep. yep. And also uh, you went to Wood, uh, Wood Fired University. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Um, so I went to Wood Fired University uh with um Agith. i think tommy it was a tommy that's there I yeah do it. yeah so so it was fun going to that because i had been to tony's courses already so it's always nice to get as much information as you can from different people right so so going to the course in denver with Agith, it was very uh informational and the thing that they presented well when I was there was for somebody who's maybe a beginner, beginner or somebody who's just coming in, you can come into that course and not feel overwhelmed because they do a good job with the basics working into everything else. So you don't need to come in there and study the whole pizza Bible before you go in there. You can go right. in there 
without much of an education on pizza and learn a lot. Now, I already knew quite a bit when I went in there and I still learned a lot. So that's why I'm saying it, it was good for me. And then I know that they have an advanced course now also that I really want to get back out there and visit Agits for at some point. Cause I think that they would like to probably hear from me some of the stuff that I have done with my oven that's not traditional, you know, getting in there. You know, we do a lot of wings out of our oven when we do pizza events also. So I, I really think it'd be good for me to get in there and maybe talk about some of those things. But they're great. It's very informational. It's very hands-on, which I like. So you don't sit there and just get, uh, just get talked at the whole time. Sure. You break down into groups. You're making pizza dough. You're doing appetizers. You know, I, when I was there, Michael Shapiro was there. I'm sure you probably know Michael. I'm I guessing. do know Michael. I had a great conversation with him. He's a great guy. Yeah, I, I Sergeant will. Uh, Peppers. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And he, uh, I was out there when he was, so I was lucky there because of course he's great. You know, you look at what he does and he, he does a wonderful job. So I look at, I mean, I'll steal ideas off his menus. A lot of times we all do that to each other. Sure. But, you know, Michael, uh, you know, I really look at the detail that he puts into into what he's doing. So I was I was lucky. So so not only are you going out there for the education, but you make a lot of contacts also. And all of us stay in contact with each other, you know, whether it's through the fire within pages or and we're helping each other out or messaging each other on Messenger, you know it's good to build those relationships being in this industry because we're not all fighting with each other. We're all working with each other. There's sure. even a guy local to me that's about 90 miles up the road. He'll message me all the time asking for advice. And is he a competitor? You know, I don't know, but I don't mind helping him out. There's plenty of this business to go around. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. That sounds great. It's a lot about relationships. It's a lot about collaboration. And it's a lot about yeah. helping each other. I think that's that's the real key in the pizza business. And I think that's uh, w what makes it so special. People are not competing against each other, but they're collaborating right. with, with each other. Yes, I think absolutely. That's really important. Absolutely. So yeah. I have a couple of questions also. What advice would you have for someone that wants to get into the pizza business, is thinking about it? Uh, what would you tell them? Um, I think as far as the piece of it, are we talking the mobile business, I yeah. guess, or yeah, I guess that's where, the where people okay. really start. Yes. Yeah. So, so what I have found for me is that getting into the mobile business, um, I'm lucky because I have about a hundred employees that work for me. So I don't have to do everything on my own, Yeah. but if you're going to get into the pizza business and you're going to buy a mobile oven, you better be ready to work because it does take a lot of work. It does take marketing. You know, if you pay attention to my Cole house page or you pay attention to Siler's pages on where he's going to be with his mobile ovens, you've got to get the word out and you've got to let people know. And that's just the marketing side. You've got to do your pizza dough. You know, you've got to prep everything in advance. You've got to do the math on, uh, you've got to do the math on where you're, where you're going, how many pizzas do you think you're going to need? Because you need those pizzas proofing and ready to go. And you don't want to have too much pizza because then, then it ends up, you know, you overproof it and you have to throw it away or waste it. Sure. It is not, it is, if you're going to get into this business, you need to be ready to work because if you do work hard, you can make money. But if you don't have the energy or you don't have the resources to, to have the, manpower i guess to do the job you're not going to set yourself up for success it's going to be a lot of work but i'm not complaining because it's worth it in the end okay <clears throat> since you are a master pizziolo master you know you've had a lot of yep. course experience you've taken you've been with tony you've gone to wood fired university what advice would you have for the home pizza maker for making pizza for the home pizza maker just have fun and experiment, you know, I'd, I'll make pizza at home. You know, my advice is try everything because it's so fun to make different styles of pizza. Get your kids involved because kids love pizza. That, you know, that's the thing about pizza. Everybody likes pizza, you know, not everybody 
likes everything, but everybody likes pizza. I'll tell you now, at the holidays, I pre-make pizza doughs and I let everybody come in and just make their own pizzas. That's what we do. My daughter's birthday is in two weeks. She wants the pizza oven in the driveway for all of her friends to make pizzas. Sure. So just have fun doing it and enjoy it. And don't be scared to try different combinations of different things. You know, we throw quail eggs with balsamic vinaigrette, figs and arugula on a pizza with cheese and an olive oil sauce. And people have it and they're scared of it. Then they're like, this is the best pizza I've ever had. So just, I just tell people, have fun with it. You know, pizza is a fun food. Okay, Chase, thanks a lot for taking time to talk to me. How can people contact you? Tell us how people uh, can hook up with your own pizzas and your other businesses. Um, social media, most of the time. Um, on social media, my name's Chase Gibb, C-H-A-S-E-G-I-B-B. -B. Um, you can find my pizza page. Uh, it's Cole House 337, C-O-A-L. It's actually H A U S then the number 337, um, Fork Catering Company. Eventually, I will transfer everything that is in Cole House over to the Fork Catering Company sure. because of some stuff going on with COVID and some, uh, 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 some things going on there. I haven't completely got rid of that concept yet because we may, we may there's a chance that location could actually reopen down the road. Um, Buffalo Tavern, Buffalo 61 Bar and Grill, Buffalo 67 Steakhouse. You can find me on any of that stuff. Instagram, uh, it's chasrock1, C-H-A-S-R-O-C-K-1. Uh, I joke around a lot. I have a lot of fun. Um, I, uh, but yes, you can add me on any of those, message me on any of those. I'm active all the time. So people can get okay. a hold of me there. Great. Hey, Chase, thanks a lot for taking time to talk to me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Okay, we'll do.